Hi, everybody. Welcome back from lunch. Thank you for joining us for Data on Kubernetes Day second half. Thanks for making it this far. I hope you get some tea, coffee, whatever you need. Do some calisthenics. Wake yourself up. Um, we have uh, uh, Jen Chung Song, who could not make it in person with us today, so we have a recorded talk from them, and they will be starting that just in a moment. Enjoy. Hello, everyone. My name is Jia Xun Song. I'm a software engineer on the GKE Stateful Workload team. Our team focuses on integrating various storage solutions with Google Kubernetes Engine. Today, I'm excited to present a Kubernetes object storage solution for AIML data portability, object storage fuse CSI drivers. This innovative solution is derived from a project developed by our team, and I believe it will be beneficial to the Kubernetes community. This is today's agenda. Firstly, I will discuss the background by asking a few questions. The answers to these questions will help you have a better understanding of today's topic. Then I will discuss some problems with the current existing designs in the open source community, and then present our solution to address all the issues. I will use our team's product, Google Cloud Storage Fuse CSI Driver, as a concrete example to demonstrate some technical details. A demo will follow to show you how a typical AI application development process can be streamlined using the object storage fuse CSI driver. Finally, I will discuss the constraints of this design and our future plans. First of all, why are CSI drivers important? CSI stands for Container Storage Interface. It provides a standard interface between Kubernetes and storage providers, which makes it easier for different storage providers to de deploy and manage storage on Kubernetes clusters. As the diagram shows, a typical Kubernetes CSI driver usually consists of a couple of components that allow Kubernetes to communicate with and manage storage providers. The CSI driver allows developers to easily consume the underlying storage using standard Kubernetes API, such as persistent volumes, persistent volume claims, and CSI ephemeral inline volumes. Next question. Why is object storage a big deal, especially for AI ML workloads? It is because object storage provides a couple of advantages which are critical to AI ML workloads. The first point is scalability. AI workloads often require massive amount of data to train and de deploy models. Object storage can scale to petabytes and beyond, making it ideal for storing and managing AI datasets. Secondly, object storage is designed to deliver high performance for concurrent access to large files. This is important for AI workloads, which often need to access data quickly from multiple compute nodes. Moreover, object storage is typically more cost-effective than other types of storage. Last but not least, object storage is easy to use and manage. It usually provides access control, object versioning, and geo-replication features. It is also typically compatible with a wide range of AI platforms and tools. Let's talk about Fuse drivers. Fuse, which stands for File System in User Space, is a Linux framework that lets someone develop a file system in Linux user space. Fuse drivers can be used to translate object storage buckets into virtual file systems so that they can be mounted as local file systems. The major cloud providers have all released Fuse drivers for their object storage solutions. For example, Microsoft Azure has Azure Blob Fuse, Google Cloud Platform has Google Cloud Storage Fuse, and AWS S3 recently announced their solution called MountPoint. So why does Fuse driver matter? 
the object storage field drivers provide two main benefits, port portability and cost effectiveness. Let's take a look at portability first. Running the same workload in different environments usually requires code refactoring. For example, data scientists usually use a subset of the training dataset from a local file system to develop and tune their training code. When they, need, when they need to lift the code to cloud or deploy the code to the production environment to train the model, the training job needs to consume the entire data set stored in object storage buckets. In some cases, they will have to refactor the code using cloud provider SDK or API to access the data. Using object storage fuse driver avoids this by allowing AI applications to access data in buckets directly using file systems without dealing with cloud provider SDK or API. Another huge benefit is cost effectiveness. AI applications usually require expensive computing resources such as GPU or TPU. Before the training job actually starts, the application needs to make sure the data is ready to feed the computing resources. Downloading or prefetching data from object storage to local storage can result in compute resource idle time, which is a huge waste of time and money. Object storage fuse drivers allow AI applications to take advantage of this cost savings by eliminating the need to download data to local storage. All the data can be streamed and the training jobs can start right away. So how about we combining all the components together? The object storage fuse as a driver could be a great choice for mounting object storage buckets as local file systems on Kubernetes clusters. There are a couple of existing implementations in the open source community, and many platforms and products are relying on these drivers. However, there are a number of challenges that can arise when using this combination. These challenges prevent this solution becoming a widely accepted choice. So what are the problems? In the current implementations, the fuse drivers are typically run either inside the side side driver container or directly on the node VM. Both approaches have some drawbacks. If all the fuse driver instances run inside a side side driver container, it can be a single point of failure. This also makes it very difficult to gracefully crush side side driver containers without interrupting all the fuse mount points, especially during the side side driver upgrade. Besides the availability issue, another drawback is about scalability. It can be difficult to scale to large numbers of concurrent users or large data sets because all the fuse mount points rely on a single side side driver container which can become a bottleneck for larger workloads. Running the fuse drivers directly on VM nodes could be a viable solution to address the availability and scalability issues. However, because fuse drivers can consume significant resources on VMs, it can be difficult to manage and report the allocatable resources on the nodes if the resource consumption is not tracked by Kubernetes. Either running the fuse drivers inside the CSI driver container or on the node VM, they usually use unified authentication for all the fuse mount points. However, it is more ideal to use workload specific credentials to access the fuse volumes. Now, introducing a sidecar based solution. The fuse instances run inside sidecar containers along with the workload pods, and it takes advantages of kernel cross process file descriptor transfer. Basically, 
The solution divides the fuse mount into two steps handled by two different processes and relies on file descriptor transfer to connect the two steps. I will show you details later. The solution addresses all the below issues. First, availab availability and scalability. Running as a part of the sidecar container, the lifetime of the fuse process matches that of the consuming pod. It can easily scale as each pod has a separate sidecar container. Resource attribution. The sidecar container resources can be individually configured. And security. The sidecar container can leverage workload identity features. Specifically, most cloud providers allow developers to use Kubernetes service account as an IAM service account to authenticate with the cloud provider API. Furthermore, the file descriptor transfer technique allows the sidecar container to run as an unprivileged container. Additionally, and most importantly, our POC proves that this solution can be, can be adopted by any fuse drivers, as long as the driver supports the mounting using the file descriptor number. Let's take a look at our team's implementation as an example. This design follows the common CSI driver architecture. The CSI driver node server runs as a daemon set pod on each node. Sockets are used for the communication between the CSI driver node server and kubelet. For simplicity, the CSI driver controller server is not included in this diagram. The fuse drivers ran inside the sidecar containers along with the workload pods. The workflow starts from an admission webhook controller. The webhook monitors all the pod creation requests and injects the sidecar container into the pod if the fuse volumes are detected. Users can configure the sidecar container resource limit using pod annotations in our design. The fuse drivers use pod service account with a workload identity feature enabled to authenticate with the cloud provider API. The CSI driver node server implements the CSI spec to allow kubelet to mount or unmount volumes. Then the most interesting part of this design is the so-called two-step fuse mount technique. In the first step, the CSI driver opens the dev fuse device on the node VM and obtains the file descriptor. Then it calls the Linux command mount fuse 3 using the file descriptor. In the end, the CSI driver process calls Linux send message command to send the file descriptor to the sidecar container via an UDS, Unix domain socket, in an empty dir. In the second step, in the sidecar container, a launcher process connects to the UDS and calls Linux receive message command to receive the file descriptor from step one. Then the process calls the fuse driver passing the file descriptor to start to serve the fuse mount point. Instead of passing an actual mount point path, we can pass the file descriptor number to the fuse driver as long as it supports mounting using a file descriptor. In this process, the sidecar container does not need to be a privileged container. Only the CSI driver container requires privilege to open the dev fuse device on the node VM. Now let's take a look at a demo. In the demo, I will deploy a Jupyter Notebook server, a training job, and an inference workload. All the applications consume the same bucket. The demo will use the Amnest database and TensorFlow to train a model that can recognize handwritten digits. First, here is the Jupyter Notebook server spec. We are using a load balancer so that the notebook server is publicly accessible via a public IP address. 
on the pot spec. The GCS bucket is specified in a CSI inferior inline volume. By using the CSI inferior inline volume, we don't need to define PV or PVC objects. The pod has some annotations that tell the webhook that this pod uses the fuse volume and to specify the sidecar container resource limits. With the workload identity feature enabled on this cluster, the pod uses a service account as a GCP IAM service account to authenticate with the Google Cloud Storage API. Here is the Jupyter Notebook server pod up and running. Let's inspect the pod. As you can see, the sidecar container was injected. Now, let's take a look at the bucket we are using for the demo. Here are some data uploaded to the bucket already. Now, let's move on to the Jupyter Notebook server. As you can see, the bucket is mounted as a local file system. Because the dataset is already uploaded to the bucket, we can easily use the Jupyter Notebook to explore the dataset and do some sampling. You can also develop your training code against the dataset, just like the dataset is in the local file system. The training code is also stored in the bucket. Now, I'm going to create a PV PVC pair for the training job and inference workload to access the bucket. The GCS bucket name is specified on PV object using the volume handle field. Here is the training job spec. Similarly, the pod has the annotation and uses a service account. The difference is that this time the pod consumes the bucket using a PVC. The training job will fetch the training code from the bucket, train the model, and periodically write the training checkpoints and logs to the bucket. In the end, the job will persist the output model in the bucket. Here is the training job pod. Let's take a look at the logs. The training has finished. Model was saved. Let's check the artifacts in the bucket on the Jupyter Notebook UI. As you can see, the models were saved in the bucket. And here are training checkpoints and TensorFlow logs. Lastly, I will deploy an inference workload. The inference workload consumes the same PV PVC that point to the same bucket. The inference job will use the pre-trained model in the bucket to make some predictions. The inputs are also stored in the bucket. Here are the inputs. Here is the prediction inference um, pod. Let's check the logs.
the prediction has completed. The prediction result looks pretty nice. Here are some takeaways from today's talk. Object storage shield CSI driver could be a great choice for AI workloads on Kubernetes. Our sidecar-based solution and the two-step fuse mount technique could address the pain points in the traditional design. Our solution has various advantages. Okay, no design is perfect. Let's talk about limitations and our future plans. One restriction of the design is that it does not support fused volumes in the innate containers. Moreover, the implementation has to handle the sidecar container auto-termination after the main container exits. Fortunately, the Kubernetes sidecar container feature is a great solution to remove all these limitations. The sidecar container feature is available in Kubernetes 1.28. And we are looking forward to using the feature on GKE after it is promoted to beta. On Thursday, Todd and Sergey are going to talk about the sidecar container feature. If you are interested, please check it out. Here are some references. You can Google our project repo on GitHub. Google Cloud Storage Fuse CSI Driver. Feel free to create PRs start a discussion or create an open issue. Thank you very much and see you guys there.